The church seasons seem to follow us in Canada in rather powerful ways. Um, I remember at Easter, I preached about this really pleasant conjunction of, it seemed that just when Easter came this year was also when the weather got warm and I saw my first flip-flops on Holy Saturday, and I was really excited. Uh, And now, I feel that Advent follows us uh, in Canada in the same way. This is a season of darkness and meditation as we contemplate the end of the world, or perhaps the end of the world as we know it. And at the same time, we look outside and every day is getting darker and darker. I woke up this morning in darkness. I will be having dinner in darkness. And it's only going to keep getting darker until uh, December 21st. For thousands of years, people thought that uh, one day, one year, this darkness will continue. And on December 22nd, it's going to get even darker. And the 23rd, darker after that, until eventually the whole world will be bathed in total darkness and cold. All the plants will die and the world will end. So we have the summer, the winter solstice when we can celebrate that actually the days are starting to get long and oh, we're going to live as a species for another year. Our world is not going to die this year. Because if it's going to die, it's going to be on December 22nd. Interesting. And powerful pagan, right, that we embraced at Christmas. But quite seriously, in our community, this is a time when we start to see each other less and less. A lot of people in our parish fear the ice and the cold. A lot of people are worried about falling. We see them less. This is a time of year when poverty and wealth feel particularly, uh, the differences in our society feel particularly stark. Uh, If you go to a mall this time of year, it starts to become tense. The people in the mall are tense, boiling in their parkas as they wander around. Employees uh, will have one negative interaction that will haunt them the whole day, and I think everybody in that mall will have one of those. This is a time of year when our memories can come back to haunt us of Christmas past, uh, both great and not so great. This is a time of year when the world gets dark and the world gets stressed. And sometimes it feels for some of us that the world is going to end. And we found as a society that one of the antidotes to this very real uh, source of stress and anxiety and even fear, one antidote is to wrap ourselves in Christmas early. So I'm sure you've seen, if you go to any coffee establishment, they'll have the little coffee cups. Uh, If you put on the radio, Magic 100, they play Christmas until Christmas Day. Apparently not Boxing Day, which is perplexing, but that's neither here nor there. We're surrounded now by Christmas lights. There are Christmas goodies at the grocery store. I admit that I already purchased a box of candy cane Oreos and the candy cane eggnog, which sounds gross, but it is not. There is a Christmas blanket that we put around ourselves in this darkest time of year. And so, and I'm sure you've heard gazillions of sermons on this, that we have this tension between the enormous wisdom of our tradition that calls us in times of deep, deep darkness to bathe ourselves in darkness and the wisdom of our culture around us that says, this is a really dark and cold time of year. Let's endure the darkest days with a Christmas blanket. And I wonder if there is a tension there that we need to embrace. I've been trying to think of an analogy for what Advent is like. And I wonder if a good analogy is that very first game that we played back when we were small little babies. I suspect almost every one of us played this game 
where our mother or father puts their hands in front of their face and then surprises us. A lot of psychologists say that that's the very first, uh, that's the very first drama that we experience. It's, for some of us, it's the very first comedy. It's the very first moment where our entire universe is in front of us and then is gone and then returns again. And for some of us, that was delightful and hilarious. And we'll see babies laugh when that happens. But if, if that small child is under an enormous amount of stress and anxiety and fear, and you play that same game, they're probably going to cry. I wonder if Advent is similar. There are some years for us when things are going well, where we can truly bathe ourselves in darkness, and it can be delightful. And any sort of touch of brightness in this time would be like that when, if you're in a movie theater nowadays and people, somebody in the front row, the rows in the front row, turns on their cell phone and there's that big bright rectangle and it spoils the darkness for everybody. For some of us, this can be a deep meditation as we, and we know it's a game as we imagine God not being here and anticipate God coming again. There can be something deeply powerful about that meditation, about envisioning that kind of darkness. And there are some of us where we're going to be like that child, and that's not going to be funny, because we're stressed out right now. It is a dark and cold and frightening time. And the tension in that game is we're supposed to simultaneously be be nervous that our, our universe, our loved one, is gone, and know with absolute certainty that they're going to come back. And I think for some of us, we need that certainty. There's already a lot of darkness. We need to know that Jesus is coming. So give me the Christmas blanket. I want my red coffee cup. I want to see the lights. I need to know that God is coming, because he doesn't feel like he's here right now. I'm not, I'm, I'm, and I'm preaching this partly out of experience. There was, there's been some times in my life where I've been completely alone at this time. A lot of other students uh, and other people can head home for the Christmas season. But uh, when I was a young priest living on my own, I couldn't go home until Boxing Day. And uh, there was a long stretch of time in those early Advents when I first started in parish ministry in Montreal where I spent all of Advent alone either in church or alone. And I was waiting for Boxing Day to come before I could see my family and my friends. And man, I needed those Christmas lights. I needed that Christmas stuff. I, uh, every, every seminary professor that taught me said, embrace the darkness. And I was like, I don't know, this is pretty dark. <laughs> I kind of can't see anything in here. Uh, and, you know, and yet now at this time, I'm so looking forward. That it, it's, a, it's a different time for me. And I'm looking forward to the darkness and the meditation of this season in a way that I haven't as a, as a young priest. I did not. So perhaps it's the same for you. I don't know if this is a season where the darkness of Advent will comfort you or if you need that Christmas blanket and those lights. Perhaps it's both. but I encourage you to welcome and embrace Advent. Amen.